What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am super excited that you joined today. Whether you're here for So Hills Kids or just exploring the world of the internet, I'm glad that you decided to watch this video today. Today we are talking about Abraham again. Wow. That's right, we just, we've been like three weeks now talking about Abraham, so I hope you're catching on that this guy, he's kind of important. We're talking about Abraham today. Uh, two weeks ago we talked about how God made a promise, and his promise was that Abraham would have many, many sons. Now, we know that ultimately Abraham and Sarah, his wife, had a kid named Isaac, and this was their only kid. And so today we're going to discuss what happened. Now, before we jump into that, let's jump into our game. All right, guys, here's our game. It's super simple. It's called the challenge game. What does that mean? That means I need you to find the closest person to you and challenge them to what you may ask, whatever you want. Rock, paper, scissors, a thumb war, a push-up contest. See who can run to the mailbox and back, but don't fall down and hurt yourself, please. I would get in trouble. Um, but do a challenge. Challenge somebody, and then, so pause the video and come back, and then see why I made you challenge something, okay? So, go do that, and we'll be right back. Boom, who won? I hope it was you, or you, or, or both of you, maybe both of you won, either way. I am super uh, excited about today's lesson. Now, I made you do a challenge, and you might be thinking, why did, why did you challenge? Uh, the reality is we face challenges and tests a lot in our life, whether it's a school test, a test of our physical strength in sports, or maybe our lung capacity in band, or whatever it is, we are challenged and tested throughout our lives. And the reality is if we choose to follow Jesus, He's going to put us to the test as well. Now, we might be thinking, um, I haven't studied for this Jesus test. That's okay. It's not quite like that. You see, we are all called to big, big things in God's kingdom. He wants us to do amazing things, and we can through His help. But sometimes that requires uh, challenges. It requires accepting and doing things that we may not want to, because ultimately we trust that God is in control of everything. So if you remember uh, our big picture question, it is, is God in control of everything? And the answer is yes, he is control of everything on heaven and on earth and nothing happens outside of his power, okay? So we know that truth. We know that God is all powerful. And so we're going to look at a time that Abraham was tested. And this is a huge test for Abraham. So let's watch today's recap video and then we're going to dive into what that really looks like, okay? Let's go. God kept his promise to give Abraham a son. Abraham and his wife Sarah were very old when their son Isaac was born. One day, God tested Abraham. He wanted to make sure that Abraham loved God most of all. Abraham, God said. Here I am, Abraham answered. Take your son Isaac to the mountain and give him to me as a sacrifice, God said. Abraham obeyed God. He got up early the next day and left with Isaac, two servants, and a donkey carrying supplies. They walked for three days before they got to the mountain where God wanted Abraham to make the sacrifice. Abraham asked his servants to stay with the donkey. We'll be back, he said. Then he and Isaac went up the mountain with the supplies for the sacrifice. Isaac saw that something was missing. My father, he said, where is the lamb for the offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb. When they got to the place God had directed them, Abraham built an altar and placed the wood on top. Then he put Isaac on top of the wood. Just as Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, the angel of the Lord called out, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham stopped. Here I am, he said. The angel of the Lord said, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram trapped by its horns in the bushes. He offered the ram to God instead of Isaac. Abraham named the place, the Lord will provide. The angel of the Lord reminded Abraham that God would keep the covenant he made with Abraham. God again promised to bless Abraham, to make his family as numerous as all the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashores. God promised victory over Abraham's enemies and blessings 
to all the earth through Abraham's family. Abraham showed his love for God by being willing to sacrifice his son Isaac. God provided a ram instead. This is how God showed his love for us. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross so that we could have eternal life through him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being tested that hard? So to recap again, we talked about it at the beginning, but Abraham only had one kid, and this one kid was God's promise to Abraham. That's like your parents uh, saying, you're going to get the new PS5 for Christmas. I promise you, you're going to get that new PS5. And you get it, your new PlayStation 5 or the new iPhone 13 Pro Max. I'm talking you have the best phone in the world, okay? You get it. It's there in your hands. And you're like, yes, it's mine. And then your parents are like, okay, now that you've gotten this thing, smash it. Throw it off the roof. What? That doesn't make sense. Our parents promised it, and they gave us this gift, and now they want us to destroy it? But Abraham trusted God. That is so important, guys, for us to take away. So point number one for you guys today is Abraham trusted God. And ultimately, we see that it worked out, right? Isaac wasn't sacrificed. You see, back then, they would give sacrifices for their sin through animals. Now, you may be thinking, why don't we do that anymore, right? Granted, it's not, it doesn't seem like it's very fun. But we don't do that because Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. And we don't have to offer those sacrifices anymore. We'll get to that a little bit more in the future. But let's jump into that. So like I said, sacrifices, they happen. But Abraham was asked to make a particularly big sacrifice. You see, it was his own kid. It was the one kid that God had promised him. Can you imagine how terrible he must have felt? But Abraham trusted God. And Isaac trusted Abraham, his father. You see, many people think that Isaac wasn't actually like a little kid. He wasn't seven or eight. He might have been 18 to 20. But he trusted Abraham because he knew that Abraham trusted God. And so he saw his father trust God, and so Isaac trusted God as well. And we see that ultimately, Abraham didn't have to make the sacrifice. It was never about that. You may be thinking, oh, God wanted him to do that. No, God never intended for Abraham to harm Isaac. But God was putting Abraham to the test. And we see here that ultimately, Abraham's faith led to more and more of God's love, right? More and more of God's plan, right? God loves us so deeply and he tests us so that we grow and so that we can continue to be better followers of him. So that's point number one, guys. Let's jump into point number two real quick. Boom, point number two, guys. Let's jump into it. Did you notice what Abraham said. Let me pull up my paper because it's super important for you guys to see that, okay? Right here it says, Abraham looked up and saw a ram trapped by its horns in the bushes, and he offered the ram to God instead of Isaac, right? So, who provided the sacrifice? Right, Abraham was originally going to sacrifice his son Isaac, but that changed, right? God didn't want that to happen. And instead, God provided the sacrifice for Abraham. Now, if you'll notice, who was Abraham supposed to sacrifice? That's right, his son, Isaac. But he said, no, do not sacrifice your son. I will provide a sacrifice. Now, in the present time, the sacrifice was a ram. But ultimately, did you know that God was pointing to Jesus when he said that? Thousands and thousands of years later, God provided a sacrifice through Jesus, right? Jesus is often referred to as a lamb because a lamb is a sacrifice that they gave back then uh, for their sins. And we know that Jesus was perfect. He was the perfect lamb. It was like the ultimate sacrifice when Jesus died on that cross for our sins. So isn't it crazy that this story thousands of years ago points back to Jesus? So that's point number two, guys, is that God promised a son. God promised a sacrifice, and he delivered that through Jesus. So guys, remember, when we trust God, he works in our lives. 
He makes an impact in our lives, and He changes our lives for the better. When we trust God's plan, things work out because God knows everything, and everything works out according to His plan. And number two, guys, is that God said he would send a perfect sacrifice, and that sacrifice is here. And it was Jesus. And Jesus now, through the Holy Spirit, lives in our lives day in and day out. And you can trust that because of Jesus' sacrifice, our sins are forgiven. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm super excited about the next few weeks. We are going to be talking about a ton in the Old Testament, and it's going to be super, super fun. So with that, I will see you guys next week with our new video. Bye.